Hello, good morning class. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome you for our first session in uh, this particular unit, Child Development. I'm delighted to be here with you and I believe you are also well. And uh, we are going through this particular unit, Child Development, this being our very first uh, session and uh, we are going to have the introduction of this particular unit. And uh, as part of the introduction of uh, this unit, I would like you, my dear student, to know what we are supposed to achieve by the time we are done with this particular unit. I want us to look at the learning outcomes or the course objectives of this particular unit. One is a student, we are supposed to be able to describe the process of growth and development from conception to late childhood or to adolescent. Uh, uh, next, we should be able to analyze uh, theories of child growth and development. And uh, next, we should be able to explain factors uh, which influence the process of growth and development uh, from uh, conception to adolescent. So this particular unit outline is as illustrated here. Uh, in this unit, we we'll go through introduction of uh, introduction to child development. We we'll look through pre the process of prenatal development, theories of child development. Uh, we we'll go through postnatal development from birth to adolescent stage. We will be looking at various milestones of growth and development. And again, we look at factors influencing growth and development. It is very important when as students, we get to understand various factors which influence the process of growth and development so that we can know how we can also be able to stimulate the same process. So uh, we will begin by defining a few terms and uh, one thing that I would like you to know is that there are too many terms to define. So as we go through the unit, we'll be defining any term that needs to be defined as need arises. But to begin off, we'll just begin a few terms, uh, we'll define a few terms uh, from the course title of the unit. And uh, the first term that I would like us to define is growth. Because we are talking about growth and development, it's good to know which is our focus. When you are talking about growth and development, we can talk about growth and development of so many things. But for this particular unit, our focus is on child growth and development. So when we are talking about growth, what are we referring to? When we are talking about development, what are we referring to? Uh, it's my belief that these terms are not new to you. There are terms that are familiar, you have heard them again and again, so we are reminding ourselves what growth is. When we are talking about growth, we are referring to increase. And this is increase in height, size, shape, and mass of the body, depending on the age. Uh, the term development refers to changes in a person's physical and behavioral traits. And these are changes that emerge in another way and last for a reasonable period of time. So growth, uh, when we look at the definition of the term growth, growth itself is quantitative because you are talking about increase. Increase in height is quantitative, while development is qualitative changes. Uh, another term that I would like us to define is the term milestone because in this unit we'll be talking a lot about milestones of growth and development. So what is a milestone? <clears throat> a milestone is a significant behavior which marks progress of development. It is that which indicates attainment of a developmental function 
or acquisition of uh, skills. As the child is growing and developing, and if you are monitoring the growth of a child, what we focus on or pay attention to are milestones that the child is acquiring. An example of a milestone is like when a child develops the ability to walk. Walking is a milestone which occurs at a certain age because of growth. So these two terms that we just defined, growth, development, we'll be talking or mentioning these terms again and again, growth and development. And something that you are going to realize is that uh, these terms, we use them together, growth and development, meaning they are like kind of uh, processes that go together. They cannot be separated. But I want us briefly to look at uh, what's the difference between growth and development. As a scholar, we should be able to tell what's the difference between the two, growth. And uh, I've highlighted a few differences between the two, growth. Growth, we say it's, uh, it entails quantitative changes and uh, development, it entails qualitative changes. Uh, the fact that growth entails quantitative changes, it means that uh, these are changes that can be measured and we can measure them using standard units. For example, when a child increases in mass, it means that we can measure their weight and we measure their weight in kilograms. So we can say a child has added maybe one kilogram, has added five grams and so on. Whereas on the other side, we are saying development, there are qualitative changes. So the fact that there are qualitative changes, it means that we cannot subject development to uh, quantitative measurement like the way we do with the growth. Uh, development requires one to be a keen observer to note the changes that are taking place. For example, as a result of um, growth of brain, uh, increase in size of various brain cells, as the child continues to grow, they develop the ability to talk. Being able to talk is something that is qualitative. It requires one to be interacting with the child, to hear that the child can pronounce, can say this particular word, which they were not saying before. Uh, next difference uh, between growth and development. Growth is a process that stops at maturity. When one has, uh, when an individual reaches maturity at around the age of 19 to 22 years, uh, growth is said to have come to an end. At the age of 22, we don't expect one to add a niche up high to increase maybe in their weight. While development, we say it's a lifelong process, a process that begins from conception until when one exits the world. There are always some changes that take place because of a different influence from the environment that one is in. Uh, growth uh, describes only physical increase meaning it deals with the physical attributes of an individual, increase in height, in weight. Those are physical, uh, that describes the physical aspect of growth and development. Whereas when we come to development, de development is comprehensive, meaning it covers overall changes that take place in an individual. It is not just physical. But with the development, the aspect of social cognitive development comes in, you know, uh, increase in uh, ability to, uh, to increase in the in ability to understand things within the environment. That's part of cognitive development, and that's something that we can only happen as a result of development. Another thing about growth, we say that growth is cellular, whereas development is organizational, meaning that with the growth, we see individual body cells get to increase 
in size. Whereas with the development, there is some coordination that have to take place. That's why we are saying it is organizational. Various body organs working together so that we can observe a functionality in a child. For example, a child developing the ability to walk that a development is something that is very organizational because there is coordination that is required right from the brain. There are certain brain parts that must develop for a child to be able to walk. So uh, these two terms, as I've said, they are closely related, they are interconnected. We'll be using them together because uh, when we look at growth and development, I believe something that you agree with me from even the differences that we have outlined. Development is a broader term. Development encompasses growth, meaning growth is part of development. And we cannot have development without growth. And therefore, we may not be able to uh, separate these two terms. As we continue, we'll continue using them together. So uh, in the study of uh, child development, uh, we don't just look at growth of a child holistically. Uh, we look at the process of growth and development under specific aspects. And therefore, that's why I want us to look at aspects of growth and development, which we'll be talking about throughout this particular course as we move on. Uh, there are three main areas of growth and development. And these main areas include physical development, we have social emotional development, and we have intellectual or cognitive development. So as you're saying that maybe a child is growing and developing, for us we may be interested to know how is this child developing? Which are these areas have we noted maybe changes as a child is developing? So physical development as an aspect of growth and development, this aspect describes physical changes. And these physical changes basically encompass increase in weight, height, muscles, and growth of various body organs. Physical development also includes psychomotor changes uh, which involves or entails acquisition of uh, motor skills. And these motor skills, we have two motor skills. We have uh, fine and gross motor skill. So these skills develop or acquired as a result of development. When a child develops gross motor development, they develop skills. Uh, certain skills that they need in their day-to-day -day life. Uh, for example, gross motor development uh, encompasses growth and development of large muscles. When you're talking of large muscles, we are referring to things like the hard muscles, uh, the leg muscles, those are big muscles. Uh, and when uh, these muscles are developed, what we see as a result, the child will develop the ability like to walk. Uh, uh, the child will develop the ability to run, uh, ability maybe to throw a ball. That happens as a result of gross motor development. Whereas fine motor development entails growth of small muscles. Small muscles refers to the finger muscles. They are small muscles which are usually last to develop. And once the fine motor development has taken place, we see a child developing the ability to hold small items, like they can hold a pen and write with it. When small muscles are not developed, what happens when a child is trying to hold a pen? They hold it with the entire of their hand. They hold a pen like this. But with the development of fine muscles, they are able to hold a pen as it's supposed to be held. So that's physical uh, development. The next aspect of development, we have uh, social emotional development. And as the title may be implying, these are like two areas that have been brought together because they are interrelated, social emotional development. So social aspect is concerned with the process of uh, relating or socialization 
with the members in the society. Uh, being able to socialization means uh, to socialize means that uh, the child acquires certain skills that are required to interact with other people in the society, uh, skills required to interact with other children in the community where they are, having the ability to share some materials even as they pray. With that ability, we say that they are developing socially, whereas emotional aspect focuses on development of things like trust, self-awareness, self confidence, that ability to recognize one's feelings and being able even to label the feeling that they are experiencing. That's a very important aspect of emotional development. When a child is developing emotionally, it means that they get to a point where they have the ability to tell what they are feeling. And when they are able to tell what they are feeling, it means they are having some sense of self-awareness. And it's not just being aware, but they should also be able to express that feeling. When they are angry, how do they express that feeling? That's very important as part of emotional development. So if a child is developing socially, developing emotionally, there are certain traits that you observe in them that helps them to interact as it is expected of them in the society they are living in. Uh, the, that area of development is intellectual or cognitive development, and uh, this is an area of development that deals with uh, development of the mental capacity of an individual. When mental capacity of an individual is developing, it means that uh, the way a person thinks, the way a person reasons is advancing. The way they perceive things, perception, how do they perceive things? Are they able to perceive things even from the viewpoint of other people? Language is also part of intellectual development. If one is not developing intellectually, we may not expect that child to develop a language because we utter what is in our mind. So language development is other cognitive development. Creativity, being creative, it's also part of intellectual development. Having an ability to remember things that they have seen, things that they have had, that's part of uh, intellectual uh, development. So those are the three main areas of growth and development. That is physical, social, emotional, and um, intellectual or cognitive development. I believe as a student, as you study further on your own, you may come across books uh, that are outlining so many aspects of development, uh, like uh, moral development. You may have something like aesthetic development. Uh, some books break down this development into smaller, smaller parts than what we've done. But whichever aspects you come across, uh, maybe in other books that you interact with in the course of your study, you realize that uh, all those aspects can follow in any of the three aspects of development that we have looked at today. And I encourage you to be doing that when you come across new aspects that we have not looked at. You should be able to tell, is that aspect falling at the intellectual? Is it at the uh, social, emotional, or is it at the... Um, uh, and the intellectual development or physical development. So uh, moving on, I would like us to familiarize ourselves with the principles of child development. The unit we are going through is child growth and development. It is important when we understand principles of child development. And when we are talking about a principle, a principle we say it is a fundamental basic truth, meaning these are things that even as you interact with the children out there, you can observe. They are things that are even verifiable. If you come across principle, uh, 
uh, it's hard for you even to wonder, is it really this true? And if you're having such a question, I urge you out there to verify, to, you can do a small study to establish, is this really true about child growth and development? So the first principle that I want us to go through, it's a principle that describes uh, the process of uh, the direction of growth and uh, development, uh, a principle that is known as Sephalocaudo principle. So according to this principle, a child develops from uh, the head downwards. And uh, according to this principle, we see that, or oh, this is something that you even observe, uh, that a child develops the ability to control the head first uh, before they can be able to control any other part of the body. They will gain control of the head. That's why a newborn, the first thing that they get to learn is like how to suck. Sucking is a functionality that happens around the head because parts of the head are involved. The mouth, the mouth and the tongue are for sucking. And then within no time, they develop ability maybe to move the head. You may see them looking left or right. And then from the head, that progression goes downward. They develop uh, the ability to move arms. You may see them moving arms. And then you may see them trying to reach out for things. And then that process continues downward. They develop ability to control their legs. Even when they are lying down flat, you may see them praying aloud with their legs, lifting their legs. And uh, within no time, the legs become stronger and they are able to start and eventually get to walk. That's the progression in growth and development from the head downward. And even at birth, a newborn head is usually big and not proportional to other parts of the body because the brain is usually significantly developed at birth. Uh, the next principle of development, we have uh, uh, what we are referring to as proximodistal principle. And uh, this principle, again, describes direction of movement uh, in regard to how growth and development proceeds. So according to this principle of development, Growth and development proceeds from the center of the body outward. The center of the body, meaning in this case, the part of the body that gets to develop first, it is the spinal cord. And then from the spinal cord going outward. So uh, with the development of the, of the spinal cord, the arms get to develop, the arm will develop first, and then it will be followed by the head and the fingers will become the last to develop. That's why the ability to write comes last. The next principle of development is that uh, growth and development happens in an orderly manner, meaning it is sequential uh, in the manner it happens. Uh, for example, <coughs> Uh, the child develops the ability like to sit. From sitting, they start crawling. From crawling, they start. From studying, then they can walk with the support and eventually you see them walking without uh, support. So uh, if a child has never sat down, you agree with me, you not expect that child to walk because this is that sequence that is expected to be followed. Our next uh, development proceeds from simple to more, com uh, to more complex and from general to specific. And uh, a good example is even with cognitive development. As the child is developing cognitively, they begin by understanding simple things before they get to understand 
complex things. And also in their learning, they learn like from general to specific. And that's why even in teaching young children, we normally say start with what is simple because that is what is at their level of development. Simple, concrete, that which they can see, that which they can manipulate. With the young children, if things are out of sight and they cannot maybe sense them with their five senses, it may not make any sense uh, to them because of their, develop their level of development. Uh, next principle is that uh, children needs differ across the early childhood years. Needs are different because even of the manner in which growth and development takes place, needs are different. Like during infancy stage, um, uh, during infancy stage, this, uh, the growth happens at a very high rate, and therefore nutrition is very key and important at that stage of development. And also during adolescent stage, it's a stage in which growth and development tends to be very high. And it means that there are certain needs that are specific for that particular stage of development. And that means that uh, because needs of children differ across the early childhood years, it is very important when you understand the stage they are in so that you can also get to understand what are the specific needs of these children so that they can be met with. Again, we are saying development is multidimensional, meaning it has different aspects which we've already looked at. There is physical, there is social, emotional, and there is a cognitive development. Uh, another principle is that development is interrelated that all the aspects of development that we, are related, we have looked at, they are connected to each other, physical, social, emotional, and cognitive development. Meaning if one area is doing well, what we follow is that even all other areas will also be doing well. And again, if an area of development is affected, if there is a setback in one area, it means all the other areas of development will be affected. For example, if a child cognitive development, brain development is affected, it will follow that uh, social emotional development of this child will also be affected as well as physical development because there are certain skills uh, they may not be able to develop because of the setback. Another principle, we say that development is similar for everyone irrespective of where a child is born in whichever continent they are, development is similar for everyone. Because we see that children develop like ability to walk at approximately the same age, rage, and the sequence of growth and development is similar for all children, irrespective of where they are. And next is that development occurs at an individual rate. Even if we have said that development is similar for everyone, there are some variances we may observe from one individual to another. And these differences may be attributed to genetical inferences. What the child has inherited, there are some children who may grow faster than others. There are children who may be of the same age and one is weighing more than other. That can be attributed to uh, individual differences that may be there among children. And uh, as we come to the end of this particular session, we have gone through principles of growth and development. And there are quite many. We may not have exhausted all of them. And therefore, it means that uh, I would require you as a student to still read further on your own, to study, to research on your own. And uh, as you research further on your own about principles of growth and development, I would like you to examine those principles that we have discussed and even maybe others uh, that you come across. Uh, and as you examine them, I would like you now to ask yourself this question. Are they basic fundamental truths about child growth and uh, development? Are they basic fundamental truths about growth and development? It's good as a runner. You keep on asking yourself questions. 
that inquiry is very important for continuous running because running should be continuous. Uh, and that brings us to the end of our lesson one. I'm so glad for your attention and I wish you all the best as we continue uh, going through this particular unit together. I believe by the time we are done, we will have achieved our set objectives at the beginning of the lesson. Bye and have a nice time. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.